All right, in this video, we're going to look at the finding of the eigenvectors of a square matrix A corresponding to an eigenvalue lambda. So suppose we're given an eigenvalue lambda of matrix A. We wish to find all the vectors, you know, vectors x, such that matrix A times vector x is equivalent to the value the scalar lambda times vector x. And this equation here is equivalent to the homogeneous equation lambda i, where i is the identity matrix, minus a times vector x equals the zero vector. Now, I hope it's obvious that the zero vector itself is a solution here. That would be a very tri the trivial solution. If I replace x with the zero vector, right, clearly this would be true, right? Because any matrix times the zero vector would be the zero vector. So we're looking for non-zero solutions here. Right? All solutions, all vectors x that are non, not the zero vector, are called the eigenvectors of matrix A corresponding to this particular lambda, this particular eigenvalue. And the set of all the solutions, you know, all the vectors x that make this equation true, including the zero vector, right, so all solutions to this, is called the eigenspace of this particular lambda, this particular eigenvector, eigenvalue. Right? So the set of all solutions to this equation is called the eigenspace of lambda. All right, so we saw in the video I made last of uh, you know finding eigenvalues. We've seen that for this particular two by two matrix, A is uh, two negative twelve, one negative five. We found the eigenvalues are you know lambda one negative two, and lambda two is a negative one. So let's break this. Let's find the corresponding eigenvectors for each of these. So in part one. Let's find the eigenvectors of this matrix corresponding to lambda 1, right? So this value negative 2. All right, so if that's the case, if we're going to, we're asked to find eigenvectors, right? We're going to be solving this equation here eventually. You know, lambda 1 times i minus a. And we're going to find what vectors x make this equal to the 0 vector. So let's determine this matrix. Right. What's lambda 1 times i minus a? Right. So lambda 1 here is, you know, negative 2. And then negative 2 times i is, again, just going to be the uh, negative 2 down the diagonals, right, 0 everywhere else, minus a. And subtracting these, we get the 2 by 2 matrix with entries negative 4, 12, and uh, negative 1, 3. Right, so we're now trying to get, now we're going to try to find what vectors x can I multiply this by to get the zero vector. So this is the matrix negative 4, 12, negative 1, 3, you know, times the vector x would be a two component vector, x1, x2. And what we're looking for, what x, what x1, x2 here, what vectors x would give me the zero vector. Right, so a quick way to, you know, we've seen this plenty in class put this in reduced row echelon form. All right, very quickly get this in, uh, you can do it with a calculator or um, this is just a simple two by two here. You know, if you switch row one with row two, then uh, multiply row one by four and add it to row two. And then, you know, multiply row one by negative one. It's a, it's a pretty quick reduced row echelon form. If I put this matrix in reduced row echelon form, we get the following. Get this matrix. One, negative three in the first row, zero, zero, or a row of zeros. And there should be a row of zeros in these uh, when you're finding these eigenvectors, right? Because the, the eigenvalues, right? You were finding values of lambda that made the determinant of lambda i minus a equals zero, right? So these, these shouldn't have, these, these homogeneous equations shouldn't have a unique solution. There should be a row of zeros, at least one row of zeros. 
uh, when you put these matrices, this lambda i minus a, in reduced row echelon form. All right, so from here I'm seeing there's a free variable, right, which would be x2. So I'm going to say x2 is the parameter t. Then you're seeing this first row corresponds to this equation. That means x1 minus 3 x2, when I'm calling x2 t, is equal to 0. So then x1 would be 3 times my parameter t. So the solutions of this homogeneous equation, the solutions of the equation we're focused on here, are, you know, my vectors x will take on this form, where the first component is 3 times some number t, and the second component is that number t. And factoring, to pulling t out of this matrix, you get t times the vector, you know, 3, 1, the column vector 3, 1. Well, when t is 0, right, this is just the 0 vector, so the trivial solution, not that's not an eigenvector then. We're looking for the non-zero ones, right? When t is not 0, then these these are the eigenvectors of A corresponding to, you know, this lambda of negative 2. And we can also see from this the, uh, you know, this eigenspace of lambda 1 is negative 2, right? We see from this that the, the set of vectors, right, well, just this one vector, 3, 1, forms a basis for the eigenspace of lambda equals negative 2. And since, you know, this has one non-zero vector in it, this basis, the dimension of this eigenspace is 1. Right. So one more here, where, you know, that was that was the eigenvectors corresponding to, you know, lambda 1. There was another eigenvalue that we found for that matrix, so part 2, which to find the eigenvectors of A corresponding to, you know, lambda 2 is negative 1. So same thing, I'm going to take lambda i minus A, right, this time, you know, lambda 2, I'm negative i, right, negative 1i minus A, here's negative 1i minus A, Put them together, you get this 2 by 2 matrix with negative 3, 12, negative 1, 4. Right. And then you're seeing what vectors x I multiply this by to get the zero vector. And any non zero solution to this will be the eigenve uh, eigenvectors for this particular eigenvalue. All right, well, my lambda 2i minus a, we just saw that here. All right, that's just 2 by 2, negative 3, 12, negative 1, 4. Uh, my vectors x will have two components this, in this one. You know, you have x1, x2. And multiplying these give me this. You know, what, when when do I when can I multiply these? What are x1 and x2? So that I get the zero vector over here, the two by one uh, two by one column vector with uh, zero components. All right. So it's like earlier, uh, you've seen this with all 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 your homogeneous systems. You know, put your coefficient matrix here and in reduced row echelon form, which again, pretty quick. And you can switch the rows, multiply the first row, then multiply the new first row by you know, negative 3 and add it to the row, new row 2, get a new row 2, and then multiply the top row you know, by negative 1, making this 1, negative 4, and then you got a row of zeros. And again, I'll say it again, there should be at least one row of zeros when you're going about finding these uh, eigenvectors, putting the, this coefficient matrix in reduced row echelon form. And again, I'm seeing here that there's a free variable. So I'll let x2 again be the parameter t. So I'll let x2 be t. Uh, then from that first row back on the previous page, we see that you know x1 minus 4x2, so x1 minus 4t, will be equal to 0. That leads me to the fact that you know, x1 must be 4 times the parameter t. So the solutions of this homogeneous system, my vectors x will take this form. The first component is 4 times some parameter t, some number t, and the second component is that number t. Pulling t out, we get you know, some multiple, some scalar multiple of the vector, column vector 4, 1. So again, when, uh, just like earlier, when t is 0, this is not an eigenvector, this is just the 0 vector. But when t is not 0, you get an eigenvector of a corresponding to
to this lambda of negative 1. So all these, when t is not 0, are the eigenvectors of a corresponding to lambda, which was lambda 2, uh, of, uh, is that, that, that eigenvalue of negative 1. All right, and then uh, just like earlier, too, we can talk about the eigenspace of lambda, lambda 2. You can see from this that the, the vector 4, 1, right, just this set with the vector 4, 1, would form a basis for the eigenspace of lambda 2 equals negative 1. And, you know, this set having only one non-zero vector, uh, the dimension of this eigenspace is 1. All right, and that's it for the couple videos I wanted to post to you guys over the break. Um, when we get back to class on Tuesday, I'll start off with an example Finding, you know, maybe for a 3 by 3, finding eigenvalues, eigenvectors. Uh, and probably an example where we see repeated eigenvalues, an eigenvalue with a multiplicity higher than 1. Um, and then we'll go from there.